Give me one sec. What's up, y'all? Hope you guys have been doing all right. We've got a few more days left in the giveaway for this whistle, the uh, Dixon DX004, if I remember right. Check out that video wherever that comes up. If you haven't gotten on board yet, and if you're so inclined to get in on that drawing, check out that video. It'll let you know everything you need to do. In the meantime, uh, this is one that came out of that video. Thank you all for putting in those cool requests and, well, not requests, but letting me know what y'all's favorite tunes were, uh, because I want to start collecting a bit of a library of videos of tunes that people really like playing. Because to my ear, those are the ones that I always picked up, the ones that I just kind of liked. And this is one that a uh, guy got a request for. Uh, called the Bridges Full of Stitches, which I first heard in a Chieftain's recording, the Chieftain 7, uh, which was one of the first, like, proper trad albums that I got, using that word trad fairly loosely, of course. A lot of those tunes are ones that I still play, um, and this is on that record. This is one of them. It doesn't come up a ton at sessions, just because I, we tend to not play a lot of polkas, which is a bit of a shame, because they're kind of cool. Um, and this is a great beginner tune, uh, good, good polka to, to get under your belt. I know it in G. You can find recordings of it in D and A major also. On the whistle, I like it in G because uh, it fits in the scale. So that's why I like it. Feel free to learn it in a different key, but we're going to play it in G right now. So that's about how I play it, how I kind of like playing it anyway. Uh, let's break down basic melody like we always do A part first. Here we go, nice and chill. Now, I should point out that I'm tonguing each, well not each, but most of those notes. Feel free to play this legato or more staccato, breaking up the notes or stringing them all together however you see fit. This is just kind of how I hear it, how I hear the rhythm, and I think tongue kind of helps. So I'm going to play that same phrase again, the first part of the A part. Second phrase begins similarly. Really, it's just the ending that's different. I'll play the whole A part all together, so hopefully you'll pick it up. Right, so that's the whole A part. B part jumps up to the D, so the fifth and the five in the scale. So here we go. That's the first half of it, and I'll do that bit again. Just like the A part, the second half of the B part starts very similar to the first half. So here we go, second half of the B part. So basically the B part ends the same way as the A part, which is kind of cool because you already got that. And as far as ornaments go with 
polkas like this, polkas and slides, you don't have as many melody notes, and a lot of them are more, more repetitive, I guess. So um, it gives you some room to, to mess about and do a few different things each time through, which is kind of fun. Um, so right off the bat, that's your basic melody. I usually start with a cut, sorry, with a short roll. I just kind of like the sound of that. It just punches those notes a little bit. So, so just a short roll on G. And I do a cut on A. You can do it there too. You can do a couple of different spots, really. I can do a triple roll on that E. Sometimes. A bit too much. I don't know. I kind of like the sound of it sometimes. And that's really about all I'll do on the A part. B part, because it starts in that uh, D, the second octave D, I do like to cran that sometimes. So, so the cran again is we can either do two or three depending on how much time you've got. In this case I'd probably just do two and it's these two fingers. Hopefully you can see that. And then I can pop that A, which I've done talked about, done talked about, which I have talked about many times and I've, and I've done videos on it. That was kind of the amalgamation of words that I was going for. So that'd be again with the crayon. Again, just popping that A right there. I think it sounds cool. Again, popping it the second time coming down. And that triple roll you can do on the E which is, if you haven't done that one in a minute, it's these three, top finger, ring finger, and a tap. So then that's the end of the first half of the second half, which is similar. Now when you land on that G, sometimes it helps throw in that, that uh, crossing noise, grace note, but not below it. triple roll on the E. And a cut there to finish off the tune. That's what I like doing. It's a simple tune, simple melody. Uh, hopefully it'll be easy one to pick up and bust out the next time such a thing as a session happens, which we can all hope is sooner rather than later. Hope you all are doing well. Hit me up with any questions, comments, all that good stuff. Let me know. Give me the thumbs up and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.